Okay, this one's on uh, the different types of venting that have been used over the years. I've had some questions on what venting goes where and so on. Let's look at this first one. This is one of the oldest vents. That is what we call C vent. C vent is nothing more than galvanized pipe that's uh, single wall. There's a six inch clearance to combustibles. Now this is for gas furnaces only. So six inches clearance to combustibles uh, was used as a vent connector, meaning it connected the furnace to whatever venting you used. Now, back in the old times, you could go into a masonry chimney and you would have this would go to the masonry chimney and that was, uh, the masonry chimney was your vent. Anymore, we don't do that. And we started using this stuff here uh, a number of years ago. I mean, this stuff's not new. This is B vent. Now, if you look inside it, you can see there's an aluminum liner inside. And it's galvanized outside. And there's a uh, space between the galvanized and the aluminum. Okay, this is called B vent. Uh, that's because it says B on it. No. Uh, this is a gas vent specifically designed only for gas appliances. This could be used as a vent to go through a roof or something like that in, uh, in place of the chimney. This had a one inch clearance to combustibles, so it made it a lot easier to use uh, than the old uh, C vent. Well, uh, this is still in use in a lot of places. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, when we started getting high efficiency furnaces, and we changed from what we used to call the 80% furnace, which was kind of a steady state rating. All furnaces were looked at as 80 percenters. They really weren't, but that was the steady state uh, supposed efficiency. Well, we started going over to higher efficiency furnaces. Okay, the higher efficiency furnaces, we could still use B vent, and by the way, this, this vent all had to pitch upwards, minimum quarter inch per foot. Uh, so it, all, it had to go up. Well, we stopped using most of the C vent on uh, uh, these newer 80% furnaces because it rusted out. Uh, the first ones we put in, early 90s, maybe late 80s, uh, this vent would last five to eight years and then it would rust through because the vent temperature was getting too low. We're getting too low a vent temperature. We're getting close to uh, condensing the water out of the, the gas vent uh, gases. And one of the things that condenses out with the water is both sulfur sulfuric and carbolic acid and it'll eat away the C vent. So we started putting B vent on most of these 80% furnaces because the B vent had those double walls in it. It didn't cool off at the edge, you know, at the sheet metal as easily as the C vent. So we didn't have so much rust out. You still see guys putting a C vent in sometimes, but it doesn't have a long life. Okay, that's all gravity feed. This is all negative pressure. This means it goes out of the vent because of the heat that's in it. But when we're getting the higher efficiency 80s, we're getting less and less heat in the vent pipe, and so it was not coming out as easy. We couldn't use uh, masonry chimneys. Uh, one thing, they were usually too big and we would condense in them and we just essentially rot the chimney. It would, uh, the chimney just fall apart after a while. Uh, it's, it's illegal to even put it in an exterior uh, chimney, you know, that has anything outside. Well, it's not, it's not totally illegal, but we don't do it anymore. We're up in the north. Uh, it's just a recipe for disaster. 
You can line the chimneys. You can line them with this bee vent. And sometimes that helps, but we ended up, we would put bee vent in there. It would still condense inside the pipe. And so we started putting, of all things, a zonalite in there as an insulation. So we don't use zonalite no more. It's, uh, you know, it's asbestos. It's one of the worst forms of asbestos. So we don't do any of that stuff. We've gotten rid of most of this kind of stuff, especially up in the north. Okay, what do we replace it with? Okay, I brought this thing here just because. This is a piece of stainless steel. And we used that for a short time for the high efficiency furnaces. Furnaces we knew were going to condense. These are 90 plus furnaces and the like. So you couldn't use galvanized because the silly stuff's going to rot away. So they come up with stainless steel. Look close, you can see. We sealed this with uh, silicone and to keep it from leaking. And we put a little silicone bead along here. That one looks like most of it's gone now, but that was a colossal failure. Uh, these were high efficiency furnaces they were on. We got rid of the uh, of this uh, type of vent because it could not handle the condensation in it. We used this for a little while. Uh, some guys used Plex Vent on some. That's a brand name. Recalled. Terrible, terrible mess. Good grief, what a mess that stuff was. Got rid of most of that. Okay, here's what we do with our high efficiency furnaces now. Hmm, nice crooked cut. Okay, PVC, sometimes ABS, uh, you can use the 636, some people are requiring that stuff now. Uh, I just got a guy was talking about his uh, area required 636, which is, I guess you'd call it a uh, PVC on steroids. Uh, this had good value for what we wanted to do because we could seal it. And the temperatures were not high enough. Our vent temperatures, you know, vent temperatures used to be about 400 degrees. With the high efficiency 80 percenters, it was getting down to around 200 degrees. Now this stuff, uh, they say it's 120. I've never seen one that high. A lot of these high efficiency furnaces, the vent temperature is about 80, 85 degrees. And you can't use this with high temp. Uh, you'll notice it says 280 PSI at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so that's not a high temperature vent of any type. But we used the PVC cement on it. And so we knew it was going to condense. So we used a pipe that we could seal. We pitched it back towards the furnace so that we could get rid of the condensate with the condensate pump. So that's why we use this stuff. Uh, as long as the, uh, the gluing is done properly with your uh, primer and all that sort of stuff, it works out pretty well. I have seen this stuff overheat in certain conditions, uh, not on furnaces but on water heaters, and it will just sag if it gets too hot. Uh, I suppose if you had a massive overfire on a 90 plus percent furnace, you could have a problem with it. But this is pretty much what you're going to see anymore is this type of pipe. Um, both of these types are on their way out, at least in the north. And uh, in fact, we can't even sell, uh, most, in most cases, we can't even sell the 80 percent furnaces up north anymore. So it's going to be this stuff on almost everything.